The last part of this section involves predicting relative acid strength, and we'll start the following lecture with predicting relative base strength. So although there are no questions in this section, be ready for them in the next section. According to the Bronsted definition, acids have a particular job. A strong acid will donate its proton easily, so it has a small amount of glue holding the proton on to the rest of the acid. You can think of the glue as electron density. A weak acid, on the other hand, doesn't want to give up its proton. So it holds on to the proton and has a larger amount of glue holding the proton on. Bases are the opposite. A strong base has a larger amount of glue or electron density with which to grab a proton from. A weak base has a smaller amount of electron density available with which to grab a proton. So let's look at this in terms of bond strength between the hydrogen and the rest of the acid. Which acid do you think is the strongest? Remember, the strongest acid lets go of the proton easily. The weaker the bond, the stronger the acid. So I hope you feel like three is the representation of the strongest acid. This would be like Mike Wazowski trying to hold on to a proton. And he does have sort of flabby little arms, so it's hard for him. But that's all right. He's the strongest acid because he lets go easily. The weakest acid, therefore, is representative one. And that's the Hulk holding on to that proton. The Hulk is a weak acid because you're not going to get that proton away from him very easily. Now let's look at bases. Which base is the strongest? Which one has the most electron density to reach out and grab a proton? Well, that'd be the Hulk without his proton. If the Hulk didn't have his proton, he would be the strongest base. And poor Mike Wazowski with his flabby arms, he would be the weakest base because he's going to form the weakest bond with the hydrogen. So this brings up some information concerning conjugate acid-base pairs. The weaker acid is on top with a strong bond. The stronger acid is the one on the bottom with a weak bond. The weaker acid produces the stronger conjugate base. The stronger acid produces the weaker conjugate base. So this brings up some information about how our acid base table for our textbook is set up. If I go here to resources and click on the acid base table, my strong acids are here in the upper left and they make weak conjugate bases. My weak acids are down here in the lower left and they make strong conjugate bases. So how can we predict acid strengths when we don't have any information from our acid base table? We're going to start with what I call a primary effect. In a primary effect, the hydrogen is bonded directly to what we are changing. So here's an example of a series. We have hydrofluoric acid on top, and as we go down the group, we are at hydroiodic acid. So this would be HX, where X varies within the same family or group. Our acid strength is going to depend upon the strength of the HX bond. So remember that chapter when we had bond enthalpies. Here are the bond enthalpies for H bonded to different halogens. So we want to know which is the strongest acid. The strongest acid has the weakest bond. So if you want, you can sort of think of this as a size disparity. You notice how hydrogen and fluorine are of a similar size. So it's pretty easy for hydrogen's electron to get close to fluorine's nucleus. 
This is going to make a strong bond. They can snuggle closely. But you notice how far away hydrogen and iodine are in terms of their distance from the nuclei. This makes it a lot harder for hydrogen's electron to get close to iodine's nucleus. So the strongest acid is the one that loses the proton most easily, which turns out to be a long, weak bond. So how does this look on our acid base chart? It's hard to tell because in water, hydroiodic, hydrobromic, and hydrochloric acid all completely dissociate. So we can't tell the difference in their strength from water. But you do notice that hydrofluoric acid is lower down the chart and therefore a weaker acid. Let me give you an example that you can find on the chart. This time we want to compare H2O and H2S. If you look at the periodic table, you notice that oxygen and sulfur are within the same group. So just like HI, is the stronger acid with the weaker bond. H2S is also the stronger acid with the weaker bond. Let me show you on the acid base chart. Here is H2S as an acid. It is higher up the chart and a stronger acid than H2O. So our stronger acid is H2S with the weaker bond. Here is another primary effect where hydrogen is bonded directly to what is changing. This time we're going across a period and the acid strength depends on the polarity of the HX bond. By polarity, we mean electronegativity difference. So let's look at the periodic table again. Our examples had hydrogen bonded to carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Hydrogen has a similar electronegativity to carbon. So you notice as we go from carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, we are going farther apart on the periodic table. So if we think of this in terms of electron density, fluorine is going to hog the electrons from hydrogen a lot more than carbon is. In fact, this hydrogen attached to the fluorine is partially positive. It's almost on its way to becoming a proton. So as we increase in polarity going across the period, we also increase in acidity. The more polar the bond going across the period, the stronger the acid. Our chart will show us that as well. Here is HF. It is higher up the chart on the left side, making it the strongest acid. It's stronger than water, and water is a stronger acid than ammonia. And we can't even find methane on this chart. Methane, or CH4, is not an acid. The next part of this involves secondary effects. This is where hydrogen is bonded to oxygen in all our examples. And what is changing is the item that's bonded to oxygen. So let's look at nitric and nitrous acid. Here are the Lewis structures. These are known as oxoacids. And for oxoacids with a differing number of oxygen atoms, three versus two, the acid strength depends on the oxidation state of the central atom. For nitric acid, nitrogen's oxidation state is plus 5. This is if you go all the way back to the oxidation state rules in Chapter 4. For nitrous acid, the oxidation state of the nitrogen is plus 3. So what we do is we think about this group that's attached to the oxygen as being more electron withdrawing. That nitrogen in the plus 5 oxidation state is going to try to take electrons away from oxygen. In the plus 3 oxidation state, this nitrogen is also electron withdrawing from the oxygen, but less so. So what happens with this example on the left is the electrons in the bond 
are suctioned a little bit more toward nitrogen because it is in plus 5 oxidation state. This leaves oxygen with less electron density to bond to the hydrogen, so it has less glue holding the hydrogen on, whereas the nitrous acid example has more glue. So remember, the stronger acid has the weaker bond, and having this high oxidation state weakens that bond. We can see that this is true looking at the acid base chart. Here is nitric acid very high up to the left on this acid-base chart, making it a strong acid, and a little further down, and a weaker acid is nitrous acid. Let's try another oxoacid example. This is the range of oxoacids based on chlorine. So here are all the abbreviated Lewis structures. We don't have all the lone pairs on everything, but we have what's important. The chlorine and the perchloric acid is plus 7 oxidation state, down to hypochlorous acid, which is plus 1 oxidation state. So you notice how plus 7 is more electron withdrawing away from that oxygen. So notice how weak I have drawn the oxygen-hydrogen bond. When we have a plus one oxidation state chlorine, it's less electron withdrawing. So we have a little bit more of a thicker bond between oxygen and hydrogen. So the stronger acid will have the weakest bond and the highest oxidation state. The weaker acid will have the stronger oxygen-hydrogen bond and the lower oxidation state. One more secondary effect. What if we have the same number of oxygens, but a differing central atom? So we are looking down the group from chlorine, bromine, to iodine. In this series, the acid strength depends on the electronegativity of the central atom. Chlorine is less likely to share electrons than iodine under the same set of circumstances. So you notice how this chlorine is a more electron withdrawing or more electronegative central atom. So you notice how weak I have drawn the oxygen-hydrogen bond. Whereas iodine is less electronegative than chlorine, so it is willing to share more than chlorine would under the same circumstances, so this oxygen-hydrogen bond is a little bit stronger. So our stronger acid has the more electronegative central atom. So here is your summary. When we're looking at a primary effect, the strongest acid has the weakest bond and is therefore furthest down the group. For a different primary effect where we are going across the period, the strongest acid has the most polar bond and is therefore greatest in electronegativity difference from hydrogen, so it tends to be the more electronegative. For secondary effects, the strongest acid has more oxygen and a more electronegative central atom. So hold on to those thoughts. In the next lecture, we'll look at base strengths, and I'll give you some information on that.